All right, hello friends, how are you? Day one through day of my challenge. It is Sunday, you know what that means. It's been a while, but yes, it is story time Sunday. And today, another beautiful Vancouver day. And <clears throat> I had to definitely take advantage of the beautiful weather. So I'm out here at Killarney School. There's a racetrack, tennis, I wanna play here a little bit with. Um, I wanna actually share a story. It's actually not my story, but I'm gonna ask, um, I asked my friend Steven to actually come in and share a story of a recent experience he had um, of just, um, if you will, especially with what's going on right now, anti-Asian hate. And so, uh, and the cool thing with Steven is that uh, he, he's a local lawyer and, you know, for him, he wants to stand up for justice and it was just not a great experience. And I'm sure a lot of people have experienced before, but, you know, he's someone who actually decided to stand up and do something about it. So I'm going to invite Stephen on and just ask him to uh, share a little bit of his story. And I'm sure uh, many of you can actually relate or have seen experiences like this. So, all right, Stephen, here you go. How are you doing? Th thanks for coming on today and sharing. So, yeah, can you share what uh, what you've experienced the last few days? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, Edison, 158 episodes of this this is like amazing and story time sundays is like the best name ever for story time so uh first of all my gratitude to you to let me share the story and kind of be part of this story time sunday project because uh we all love you you just speak from the heart and i'm gonna try to do the story time justice right <laughs> uh leading on to your question yeah it's been it's been a pretty remarkable last three days actually so as many of you know, and as Edison talked about in his introduction, there has been a rise in anti-Asian hate. Uh, maybe it's because of COVID, people are like locked in, they're trying to find a scapegoat. And I've seen the news, I follow along, um, but on Thursday, it was probably the first time I had it happen to me personally. I was born in Vancouver, I love the city, and it's just in the same neighborhood where I grew up, I've been there my whole life. And I'll share, Kind of what happened first but i'll share about you know really the next steps after that uh, so it was on a thursday afternoon beautiful sunny day just like this and i was in my car and i was driving to a park because i wanted to take a break for the day when my car stopped at the intersection of Fraser and 41st at the red light i heard a sound behind me and i thought the car next to me was shouting you uh effin chink i don't want to be in terrible language on a sunday but that's what they said and i was a little confused so i rolled down my window. Maybe they said something else. I want to give them for the benefit of the doubt. So I rolled down my window and I looked to my left and there's these two white men and they said, hey, you, yes, you, you effing chink. And they proceeded to throw this bag of garbage, this like take off garbage bag and try to throw it at me. And they try to throw it through the window. First of all, these guys miss, so they are really bad at basketball. Edison, you gotta <laughs> teach these guys because they miss it by a long shot. But they hit the side of my car. Uh, my car's, you know, it's a little dirty, not nothing damaged. But I think it was, there was a lot of rage and anger, and I was so taken back. And then the lights turned green, and they just sped off because they did a left turn. And I, my first reaction was being stunned a little bit. Uh, for those of you who have experienced it yourself, you can feel that feeling where it's, it's kind mm. of like the victim mentality, right? This happened. Why did it happen to me? And at first, I I didn't want to say anything. And that, that's strange, right? You, you know, I was born in Vancouver. I am a lawyer. I, I'm on the board at the Federation of Asian Canadian Lawyers. We advocate for people who don't have a voice. That's our purpose. So I am in these issues day in, day out. But even for me to have it happen, and I think I was, the, I was the first on the board to have it happen to them. I at first felt a sense of maybe a little bit of shame. It's kind of weird to say on camera, but it is. I was like, what should I do? And so I drove to the park and luckily I pulled over. Because there's a lot of a lot of strange emotions happening, right? Mm. At first I attributed like there are crazy people in the world. And they're crazies and, and I just brush it off because there's a lot of stuff happening, right? Every day. The government says, hey, don't go to the restaurants, don't do this, don't do that. So if people feel like they've lost a sense of agency, a sense of control, and people are just looking for someone to take it out on. Unfortunately, it's people like you and me, Edison, it's our loved ones, it's our family members. It's not right, and I don't mean to justify their thinking, but it gives me a different lens to look at it. 
I'll stop there to just kind of that's the incident that happened. Um, and I guess the next part of my story, Edison, if you want me to further on. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So <laughs> after I reflected, I realized that no, I have to say something. If you don't say anything, nobody will. And I think there's that sentiment that we're afraid to speak up. We, we'd be silent. And I knew right away that I had to report this. I had to tell the police, not necessarily because I want them to catch the guys, but data is really important. Data drives decision making. Mm -hmm. I currently work as a lawyer in a tech company, and our whole premise is that data drives decision making. It creates a better future for us today. When you have objective data, people can act and know what to do. So that's what I did. Okay, I, like, hey, I got to report this. So first thing I did, I went on, I'm from Vancouver, so I went on the VPD website and the first suggestion was to call the non-emergency line, which I did. So I called the line, I waited 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, are these guys going to pick up? It's like, no, I got to keep, I got to, I got to, I got to report this, 25 minutes, it was nearly 30 minutes and no one picked up the phone. Well. So I'm like, I'm left hanging. Like, is this what everybody's facing? If any, no one would wait this long for it. Cause it, honestly, my car is fine, right? No one would wait this, but you might just brush it off. And I was, for some reason, I was just so determined to like do something about this. So I looked online to see, maybe there might be an online reporting form. I looked online and what I found to my absolute surprise was that there's only two forms available. And the two forms were in simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. I could speak Cantonese, like, like I could speak Mandarin and Cantonese, but whether I can actually fill out a form, it's a different story. So I clicked on these forms, like, how am I supposed to report this online? There's only two languages on there. Also, not all Asians are Chinese. Mm. That's the bigger thing I want to latch it on. They're not. There's many races. What about my friends who are Vietnamese? I'm part Vietnamese. What about my grandmother? What about my relatives who are Filipino, Korean, Japanese? It's just not right. And why are we only limiting to these two races? What's more important is that there's no English form. So for those who are CVCs, those wow. who grew up here, you can't report it. You're either one calling the line, which I did, and I waited for 30 minutes and I, no one picked up, right? And the second one is that I had to find a back route. I took the Chinese form, I put it in Google Translate, reverse translate it into English so I could actually understand each line. And then I opened up a PDF reader, typed out all my responses on each form, and then I submitted it according to the instructions on the form. No one needs to go through all this hassle to report something that happened to them traumatically. It kind of perpetuates this victim mentality, right? Why? It's it's. There's a big problem here. I I want to recognize that. Yeah, sometimes you know I. It's one thing to be afraid of reporting. I don't want to push a report. But it's another thing for those who want to report and want to share. They should be able to share. There shouldn't be barriers like this in place. And I want to double down on what I said earlier, right? Not all Asians are Chinese. There are many, there's, I calculated, there's Tagalog, there is Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, Punjabi, Hindi. If you add all those languages together, there's over 300,000 people in Vancouver that cannot say anything. They don't have a voice. <coughs> so that's the big issue right now. And that's what I'm really concerned about. I was born in Vancouver, I have a law degree, I work in law. It doesn't take a law degree to realize that this is not right. So my intention is really not to disparage the police. Like, don't get me wrong, they have a hard job at as is. But I think there needs to be another level of awareness to understand that not all Asians are Chinese. We need to have an English form. We need forms of other languages. And we can help. We have a community. We have people like Edison, myself, others who can actually create these forms i could do it in five minutes even this morning we started a project to get this going so it's uh it's been quite a journey and i i realized that i just have to do something about it fortunately like i posted something on facebook that took fire there's like 400 likes like over 100 shares uh i was interviewed on ctv interviewed on news 11 30 i had an interview with global tv this morning interview with daily hive um Vietnamese newspapers, radio, I was interviewed on Cantonese radio, Mandarin radio on this story. Because we gotta get the message out, we gotta band together as a community, because otherwise, you know, this is a lovely city, and I don't want any of us to feel scared driving around and not being able to report this to the police. Thanks for listening, it was definitely a 
heartfelt. Difficult. I'm still processing through the emotions now, but you know, it all worked on me. Yeah, definitely, dude. I can't even imagine. <coughs> excuse me. What you know? What are you feeling in the moment? That's crazy. But you know, stuff like this I think happens a lot, and so. You know, with what you're trying to create in terms of, you know, an easier way to report and so forth, what can someone do that experiences something similar to yourself? You know, what are you hoping with what you're doing now that people can do in the future to be able to help the situation? Absolutely. And I think, first of all, I do want to encourage people to report. Uh, my cousin got spat on last week. Whoa. He didn't tell anybody except for me. <laughs> And it's not like he was holding it inside. There's a deeper rooted cause here, right? If we don't share, we carry these feelings inside and it further represses who we are. So first of all, I would encourage you to first at least tell somebody. Second of all, not just, yeah, we can complain on social media that this happened, but let's actually report it because data means so much. I know politics. I know politicians. I know how government works. I understand the system. How the system works is that there needs to be objective numbers to justify money funding and spending. Mm, yeah. Why do you think Premier Jim um, John Horgan gave a news uh, press conference after the stats were released about the VPD 717% increase in hate crimes? Those are based on actual numbers from the VPD. That's why these numbers are important because it draws attention from those in power. And I, just, I urge, I mean, to the extent you're comfortable, all right? Like I don't, I don't, I don't mean to be pushing things down. But for those who want to and feel the need to, by all means, report. And also, let me get, let me tell you a good story. I submitted the form, I reported, I got a response back in 20 minutes. So I got nice. a response back by the VPD saying, "Hey, we got your form. We're gonna get in touch with you." And I got in touch with them the day afterwards. So I want to share that stuff will happen. And you know, at the end of the day, yes, my car is a little dinged up a little bit, right? But the bigger issue and the bigger thing I want to break forward is that this barrier to justice, this barrier to reporting. It's a big fault. It's not just for me, it's for the community. It's for your family, your friends, people who come to Canada most recently. They're scared to speak up. Edison, you and I have friends who are Vietnamese who are on visas, they're in PRs. Mm -hmm. Gosh, they're not gonna say anything, right? I wouldn't say anything. If I was in a different country and I was on a visa, of course I won't say anything. So that's why it's up to us. And you know, I True. feel this, 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 this need, but this like, oh, this like inner <laughs> like pain or not, the pain is not the right word. This thing to really push this boundary forward and help make this easier for everybody. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, my friends, uh, you know, we are all one community, the world community, you know what I'm saying? We're all one family and we all need to do our part. And however small those actions you think are, it makes a difference. And so I'm grateful to know and have friends like Steven who are willing to stand up and fight for what's right. And, um, you know, for all of you who are volunteering or doing, doing something to make the community better, you know, uh, I would raise a glass to you. I don't have a glass, but <laughs> cheers to you. Uh, and for those who uh, don't know, it is, uh, it is National Volunteer Week. So happy National Volunteer Week for all of you guys who are volunteering to make the communities better. Here's to Steven for doing all he's doing to make this community better. And so... That's it for this Story Time Sunday. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and I love you all. Okay, ciao. Thank you, everybody.